Okay. So sorry, kind of amazing. It just uses raw image processing power to replace mechanical moving parts. No gimbal, okay? Uh, no camera hanging on the bottom. You can look almost straight now. Okay? I'll show you all. Okay. So let's get ourselves going here. First, there's a little button on the back. There's some things about this that are kind of chintzy, but, but you know, it does work. <laughs> so, uh, it's uh, talking. So this is an iPad. This is the controller. iPad mini, actually. First thing I have to do is I have to connect to it. This is a Wi-Fi source. Okay, so I have to go into my settings and I have to go and look under my list of various Wi-Fi things here and you'll see here's RIT sources of various kinds and there's the Bebop drum, right? It's just like you're logging into one of the RIT Wi-Fi networks, right? There it is, I'm logged in, okay? Now, I go to my app. I have an app, a control app. And I start it. Okay. And now it says setting all settings, I'm doing my thing. And look. Okay. It's, uh, it's doing something other. There it is. Okay. Okay. So there you go. There's uh, you folks. Whoa! Whoa! Oh! <laughs> Out of control. Okay. Don't do that again. I must have pressed the wrong button. There we go. Here we go. So we, here, there you are, right? Okay. So now let's see what happens. I hope this works. Notice how cool the president is oh, under fire. Yeah. That's that. how you get to be the president. Can you see that? Wow. Okay. So. Real-time image stabilization without any gimbals or anything else, okay? And it really works. See? Now, of course, you could take this too far, couldn't you? You could literally make it look like the thing's not even moving. <laughs> but because it only takes the most, the most likely recent image, you know, you still do have the effect of motion as you move forward and back, okay? Now, let me show you something else. <clears throat> Okay, oh, stop it. Keep hitting the wrong thing. Oh, by the way, I should set some settings up here before I get completely messed up here. I forgot to set my settings. Uh, hall. And then I want to go outdoor, indoor. Indoor. Okay, that should help. Oops. By the way, uh, since it's Wi-Fi, you can choose what Wi-Fi cable you want to use, and everything else. And 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, if you're a techno geek, <coughs> these things matter to you. But now, <laughs> I don't want to have takeoff. Okay, so, so let me try to uh, avoid hitting the takeoff button again. See the little green button? But watch what happens. Watch what happens. <laughs> what did I do? You can choose how you do this, by the way. There we go. Okay, so we're more or less back in place. Okay? So you can choose to view whatever part of this larger image you choose to. And you'll notice that it's corrected, isn't it? There's no spherical aberration. So it does the correction in real time. It does the panning in real time. It does the uh, image stabilization in real time, all in software. And using a very fast processor. Okay. So now, now we'll try to have a take off. <laughs> no guarantees. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Now you see it's uh, pretty stable, and the way you control it is you uh, put your finger on the screen, and then you tilt the iPad. Oh. Oh. And when you stop, it turns. It just hovers, right? I need to make it turn around. No, 
First of all, it wasn't trimmed. There was no idea of, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 you, you, that you, you yourself weren't used to flying either. So when it turned around and came at you, you know, all the controls reversed. And you got you went the wrong way through a tree or something like that. And so most model airplane enthusiasts are really good at repairs. <laughs> <laughs> now, another interesting thing about this little gadget here is that uh, because it's a Wi-Fi signal, and because it's controlled by this thing, okay, it has uh, it has kind of limited range. I would say about 150 meters. That might be a bit generous, maybe 450 feet or something like that. Okay, and the reason for that primarily is that uh, the antennas in this thing are in the legs. And uh, they're, of course, of limited size, so that's one restriction. The other thing is the antennas in the iPad are not very substantial. So being a techno geek myself, I, uh, I had to solve this problem. So I got myself a repeater, okay? This is a Wi-Fi repeater. What is a Wi-Fi repeater used for? Hang on. Just sending the range of the Wi-Fi. Yes. It extends the range. You, you, for example, if your house, your Wi-Fi doesn't go all the way to your house, you can put this in, it will actually receive the signal and then retransmit it out. Okay, and it has good antenna. In fact, if I don't like these antenna, I have even bigger ones. <laughs> See? <laughs> okay. So, I, now, now another thing that's interesting to note is that all, uh, all uh, digital devices are actually DC devices. They're just battery powered. They can be battery powered. When you get an AC plug-in adapter, all it's doing is basically converting high household 110 AC to DC. In this case, it needs five volts to run this little repeater. Okay? So I have a five volt battery. It's a rechargeable battery. Kind of this is a neat thing, actually. You know, it's kind of powerful. It has a little plug in the back, you just plug it in, recharge it. So I can plug this thing in to my little repeater here. Of course, these demonstrations never work. <laughs> so here we go. I'm turning on, and now we've got power there, and this will run for hours on this little battery pack because these things consume almost no electricity. And then we'll go back to the setup screen, and we'll begin looking for my repeater, which is Eddie Max AP. Okay. So that's another Wi-Fi signal. But I have trained this device to only repeat this, okay? Because I don't want it repeating one of the RIT networks, right? This would be bad news because I had no control over the, over, over the drone. So I have it for this. So, so now that I'm hooked up, I'm gonna hook up to the Edimax EP. And of course this never works. Oh, look, it actually connected. Hey, amazing. Well, this might work, it might actually work. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me go back here. Okay, so now I'm connected to this thing, not to this, right? President Dessler, we um, this is a photography class. Right. So, I, I are you going to take a portrait of the class with that, or are, have you been doing it all along? I've been doing it all along. Oh, you have. 
So now I'm going to go to my software here, and I'm going to go internal memory. And I have a rather large file here, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, we will uh, we will we will transfer. I may say I don't have enough memory for this file. We'll see. We'll see if we have any more. Error. Please free up storage space. <laughs> All right. We'll see what we can do here uh, to delete some stuff. See how prepared I am here. How could those be recently deleted if they're still there? Huh. I'm not recently deleted. Well, look, I, I, I don't think I, I could. I, I don't think I can in real time. At, at these those, moments, but I, I want to show you some examples. At these moments, I usually call on the students to to jump up and help. <laughs> anyway, here's a here's a video taken at my house in the winter. Okay, and notice the image. It's very stable in it. This is taken in the wind. Okay, something's bouncing all over the place, but the image is very stable. Still going? Yeah, it still is. I can see it fly around, go up higher. Incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think it's a powerful demonstration of a different approach to these things. Now, what, what are the disadvantages? Can you guess? Here, you see it panning around. That's interesting. Uh, here, I'll pass this around. I don't know how long this lasts, but you can sort of take a look at this. Uh, what do you think the limitations are? Uh, one of the things is you can look almost straight down, but not perfectly straight down. Okay, it's very close, but not perfectly straight down. And and there are really neat applications for photo drones where you want to look really directly directly down. If you're just doing casual filming for yourself, it doesn't make much difference because you know you can almost do it. Okay. Uh, another thing about this drone is that it's a uh, it's, it's small, and the battery is reasonably small. So each battery lasts about 13 minutes, and they give you two when you buy it. Uh, so you could go about, what, uh, 25 minutes or something like that. The phone would have ran into the thing for now. Uh, they're now beginning to put better, better batteries in these things. Now you can get one that will go about 60 to 17 minutes. I just ordered one of those. Uh, so, because it's kind of small, it's, uh, it has some, some fun limitations. Now, to be honest with you, and, and I think Frank would tell you the same thing, you know, keeping your concentration on one of these things for 13 minutes is, is actually a lot. <laughs> and so, by the time you're going 13 minutes, actually, frankly, you're probably willing to, ready to land the thing. But there are photographic or, or journalism applications or something like that where you would want longer. And a drone like this will go up for 25 minutes or something. So, so there's an advantage here. Okay. Uh, I think also, uh, you know, there, there are uh, some other sort of aspects of this thing that uh, I, <laughs> I, I'm sort of, a, I, I, I'm very, uh, I, I love this thing, but uh, I have a drawer full of parts. And uh, I have crashed this many times. <laughs> <laughs> why do I have you prepared it many times? Why do you crash usually? Is it because you panic or uh, you just lose your orientation? Uh, well, I, to be honest, I think the biggest reason is I, I was born without death perception. I have no stereotype. Really interesting, isn't it? You know? I don't have a lazy eye, but that's usually a characteristic people have lazy eyes. But both my eyes are fine, but I don't have any depth perception. I discovered this, by the way, when I was 16. I took my driver's test, <laughs> and they gave you a depth, a depth perception test, and I failed. They said, they said, they said which sign is the closest? So I said, I don't know. They all have the same. <laughs> so uh, it, it's had almost no ramifications in my life. But in fact, when you're flying one of these things, and it's going toward a tree, I'm not exactly sure where it is. <laughs> OK. So that actually probably one reason. Yeah. Uh, 
You know, another reason is uh, I tend to fly around the house a lot. There are lots of trees, you know, kind of stuff, you know. Uh, the wind gust comes up, you know, takes it. This is uh, not, as, well, not as heavy as that thing, and as a result, it's probably a little more wind prone and that, that kind of thing. Uh, then you'll have occasional malfunctions, you know. I mean, I've had uh, almost no malfunctions in the classic sense, but for example, when you fly this outside, it has its own GPS chip, and uh, you're supposed to calibrate it, which means the, the GPS chip wants to orient itself to know, you know what's level, what isn't, where it is, and so forth. And you're supposed to calibrate it by going through an exercise like this, and so forth. And I sometimes forget to do that. When you do that, the GPS chip can get confused. Yep. Yeah, so there's some things you just have to you know, try to remember. Uh, so I, I'd say most of my crashes have been pilot error. But uh, I have to take the thing completely apart and put it back together. I mean, down to the smallest little screw. And it's intended to be taken apart, and you can, you can buy any part you want. And I have replaced it. Any other questions? Yeah. Who stole my iPad? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I have, the, I have the previous version of this, yeah. the Air Drone 2. Um, yeah. And I've, I, I've crashed it a lot of times and stuff like that. Yeah. But so do you, do you find that. I have one of those too. Oh, you do? Okay. Are you so, going to compete in the contest? No, I'm not. Oh, but, darn. Uh, <laughs> I saw it in that one, actually. But, but um, you win a great banjo. I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find the crash resistance on? Uh, or like the sort of durability of the... the this is better than the AR drone okay. too, okay? But you can break it if, you, right. if, you, if you're intent on doing it, you can break it. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see, what have I broken? I, I, I haven't broken these bumpers, which are, and, and outdoors, you, you know, you, I don't tend to fly with them out, outdoors because uh, it makes it a little more wind, wind, wind uh, absorbing. Um, I bent propellers, you know, that kind of stuff, but the propellers come off in a hurry. I like the ones on the AR drone, you can use those little clips and stuff. Yeah, that little yellow. Th these come off, they're a little tool that just pop right off to replace. I have extras, of course. Um, I carry around stuff with me, but not too much. I carry on extra pe propellers, things like that. Carry on a charger and an extra battery. So it's actually pretty robust. There's nothing you can't break it. What's the resolution of the video that you get out of there? The uh, video is regular HD, that's uh, 1080p. 1080p. Yeah, 30 frames per second. That's the kind of HD you see on your TV. Yeah. Okay, so it's pretty good. The modern, uh, more expensive drones will do actually what they call what? 4K. 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 That, that's, a, that's a 4K, 4K camera yeah. in there. And that's even clearer. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so there's a you know, sort of limitation there. Again, that's. That's because of what they're trying to do, right? They're taking a big image, okay? Uh, you can also, by the way, you can also ask, it, it will take still photos, okay? And the still photos are regular HD unless you switch it over to the, the uh, you know, the fisheye mode, in which case it will take a full 14 megapixel image as a fisheye, because okay? it's a big round image. Okay? I'm, you know, I think, I'm pretty sure that pretty soon they'll They'll put up software to convert the round image into a yeah. into a correct image because that's done all you know as part of the HD conversion automatically. So it's fun. This is about five hundred dollars, you know, but you have to have an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone. Okay. Now I have seen them also with uh, a, another kind of controller, right? There's there's a version that comes with a. Yes. What's what do you what's the, the advantage of the Sky controller? Uh huh. And that costs another two or four hundred dollars, and it consists of uh, a kind of thing you'd sort of put over your neck. It has some uh, joystick controls, which would be more like the controls for that thing. Yeah. Uh, some people like those, and just as importantly, it has one of these built in, so the range is extended to about a mile. Believe me, you don't want any more than that. Yeah. You can't see these things. You know, it's very unnerving to have it fly out of your sight. Even though you think you can see the image on the, on the screen while it's flying. Yeah, you say, you know, I want this thing back in my field of view. Will, will it, does it, it, it must have an automatic return to home function. It has a return to home function. It also has a, uh, 
uh, you know, it has a GPS thing, so you can you can plot points along the way and have have it do its own trip autonomously. The return to home function has one flaw, which I think they ought to fix, and that is that if it's below 30 feet, it rises up only to 30 feet. Ah. And so it could run into a tree, Because right? it's going to do a direct yeah. line of sight. And you can't change that that height. Not yet. I yeah, yeah. Know. I suppose you'll be able to. But yeah, you know. yeah. So everything's in software, so you want to change it. Uh, let me see. Oh, there's my, my little toy. Uh, now let me show you a few things. Well, maybe I can't show you a few things. Maybe not. Yeah. Let's see what, what happens here. This is another uh, kind of odd comment or feature. This feature has a problem. In order to uh, restart this thing, I have to power off. So that'll take a second. Uh, but I want to show you what, what kind of features it has. Uh, it has uh, photographic settings 